everyone's favorite cynical lazy cat returns. It's the Garfield movie! Except for it's not. This is not the Garfield I remember from the late 70s when I wasn't even born yet. This isn't the Garfield I remember slightly from the 80s when I was a wee little one. This is not even the Garfield I remember from that crappy animated show. I said it. It wasn't very good. And neither is this movie. Let's talk about it. Chris Pratt stars as Garfield. If that's not a turnoff for you as a Garfield fan, then you probably don't really know the character that well. But I'd like to know you more. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you want to follow me and listen to more movie reviews, commentary, rants, roasts, everything movies every single week on the channel. Adam does movies. That's, that's who I am. That's what I do. And now let's do this review in a spoiler-free fashion. As I was saying, Sony, in their infinite wisdom, cast... Chris Pratt is the voice of Garfield, because when you think of a lazy, piece of crap, cynical jerk of an animal, you think fun-loving, happy-going, upbeat Chris Pratt. He's Mario! He's Emmett from the Lego Movie! He's Andy Dwyer from Parks and Rec! And now he's wrecking this cat voice. Because Chris Pratt, and you know what, I have no problem with the guy, he seems like a very nice gentleman. Uh, and I, I like a lot of the stuff he's in. He's just getting a payday. He's got a couple kids at home. Why wouldn't you? Why the hell? If Sony backs up to your house with a truckload of cash and says, Hey, could you spend a couple weeks just voicing Garfield for a dumb animated movie? No one's saying no to that. I mean, come on. I don't have any issue with Chris taking the role. I have a lot of issue with Sony even offering him the role because clearly they don't give a shit about the character or about the property. They're in it just to appeal to the new demographic, the new generation that don't want to see a cat that's snarky, witty with his replies, a bit of a bitch. They want a cat that loves eating food and watching TV and occasionally will go on a crazy wild adventure, which is going to be 80% of this movie. Now, before inevitably someone jumps in and says, Adam, why do I care? You're an adult. Why do you have an opinion on this? It's for little kids. No, it's not. It's not for little kids. Or at least the character's not. Garfield, again, started out as a comic strip. It spanned into a bunch of different things over the years, but he was always known for being a prick. He was always known for being very snarky, very cynical, and that was what was great about him. He was a he was a lazy household cat that has the best life imaginable. So he gets annoyed at Mondays. He gets annoyed of breathing because he considers that exercise. That's not the version we get here. They took the name and they just spun it into some garbage show, some garbage hour and a half nonsense that parents can take their kids to. The problem is in 2024, that don't fly, Zazu. Parents have way more options now than we had even 10 years ago. Tablets are everywhere. Kids can watch Bubble Guppies or Paw Patrol or whatever the hell kids are watching now. They can just sit on the phone for hours playing mobile apps under the dinner table while the parents have a conversation. Why is your kid under the table at a restaurant? That's disgusting and it's just kind of sad. I mean, you're out in public. Have a little bit of shame. Have a little bit of humility. Anyway, this is just a straight up corporate cash grab for name only and nothing else. They can try to sucker in the older people to bring their kids out because they grew up on guard field and he's fun no no people don't need to drop a bunch of money now to entertain their kids for a couple hours they can do that at home for free and that's a big problem for the theaters because these movies ain't cheap even a matinee is gonna cost probably 30 or 40 dollars if you have a family going if you're going to a night movie, yeah, you're going to be dropping 60, 70, 80 bucks if you get a couple drinks and tickets. $80 on a shitty throwaway little film? No, sir. Not bloody likely. And back to Chris Pratt, what's going on? Well, not much. He, he kind of like puts half effort into going deeper with the voice and sounding a little negative. But then immediately in the next sentence is back to just being like, Hey, Odie, let's go over here. Oh, Mondays. And now I'm talking like this again. And now I'm kind of like this again. He's all over the map with this. The voices all around are a shit show though. Nicholas Holt, who I also think is fantastic in pretty much everything live action, is doing the voice of Garfield's owner, John. Very odd. 
The pitches are all off. He's constantly high when he should be low. He's low when he should be not talking. It's a bizarre choice. So what are we gonna get with the Garfield movie? I imagine it's gonna be a fun, light story where Garfield and Odie get up to no good around the house. They have to deal with John. There's lots of fun observations about cats and owners. And no, it's not like that at all. There are a lot of callbacks to the old comic strip and whatnot, but it's done through montage in a couple seconds so they can just say, look at, look at, we remember. Garfield's on the side of a window. We remember when he's a big balloon at the parade. That's there for a second. Look at John's trying to bathe him. These are all done in such quick throwaway segments that could have actually been fun things played out on their own, but instead, no. Now we're going to road trip this movie. John's only going to be in it for maybe a total of four minutes. This is a road trip movie with Garfield and Odie. Garfield's going to meet up with his dad, who as it turns out, owes this evil cat lady and her henchmen a bunch of milk from a job that went bad years ago. It went uh, uh, sour, I guess you could say. The cat's behind bars for a while. She's back out and now she wants revenge. Jinx the cat has devised a perfect idea to get her revenge, which requires Garfield, Odie, and the new man, the old man, to pull off the greatest heist of all time. The heist, that's gonna be a large chunk of this movie where Garfield's gonna be in disguises, flipping around things, doing stuff that Garfield would never do normally. Now, I'm not gonna say this is the worst movie ever. There's definitely a couple jokes that land and there's a few spots that are like, ah, that was amusing. But overall, this is a disgusting use of the property. If you want an example of something that does work, I really liked the Peanuts movie from, I don't know, five or six or 50 years ago, however long it's been. Life just keeps going for some reason. I, I can't stop it. It's out of control. But the Peanuts movie was great. It had the spirit of the original in mind. It had some good voices. It had really wonderful animation. And it wasn't afraid to utilize what worked in the past and just modify it and update the effects and the graphics and everything for a new generation and not lose the spirit and the characters that were so memorable before. What's the point of Garfield if he can't have what made him Garfield initially. That's the problem with a lot of these modern movies and TV shows that try to rebrand or reboot things from the past or bring back a character. It's like, you, you lost me when you lost a lot of their personality traits. You lost me when you tried to make something that was a hard R in PG-13 it, or whatever the case may be. It's always something stupid that they feel like they have to do because things don't work that way anymore. Well, they don't work that way anymore if you don't allow them to. Garfield can still be a jerk. There's a, there's a place for Garfield still. In fact, there's more of a place than ever before. We need more voices like Garfield. Sony is not my favorite studio. In fact, they're probably one of the worst ones putting out movies these days. It's clear that they just go for the name and nothing else. That's why we had Tom Holland as Nathan Drake, which was maybe one of the worst casting choices I've ever seen in a long time. And here we are with Chris Pratt as Garfield because Chris Pratt's a big draw. I don't think it's going to be that big of a draw, though. And I don't think Garfield is either, especially when people find out that's not the cat they remember. And new generations don't give a shit about Garfield at all because we haven't they haven't been introduced to him or reintroduced in a way that is fitting to the character. So it's just another generic cartoon cat now. And I think that's the saddest part about all of this. The new generation just doesn't have that much for themselves when it comes to movies. Movies are now just retreads, rebrands, repackaging of what's already come before. It'd be really nice if we could make new things for new kids that can grow up and say, oh man, I loved that when I was a child. They're not gonna look at this Garfield movie that way. They might not even look at it at all. And as a parent, I do not recommend wasting a bunch of money on this movie. It's not gonna be fun for you, or it might be passable to you, but your kid's not gonna care. It's colorful, sure. There's lots of loud ass noises. Some of the noises in this blew my freaking eardrums out. Just zero to 1000 instantaneously. And for those concerned that people were scared that a grown ass man went to this movie by himself because his family didn't want to go with and I really didn't want to pay for them anyways because it's not worth the money to go to it. Uh, don't worry, I was the only person there. There was that, that theater was empty. It was just me. And that'll probably, be, uh, that'll probably be the movie theater in general. In five years, I'll just be one of the last ones hanging on. I'll be there by myself at Mad Max Saga 15. 
by George Miller. He's 85. He's 95 making them still. It's a, it's a spinoff of the Furiosa spinoff with one of the other characters. Anyway, I don't know, man. Let me know your thoughts. Did you see Garfield? Do you plan on it? Maybe not now because of this disgusting review. Like the video. Please think about subscribing if you haven't. I post movie content all the time. Would love to have you stick around. If you really enjoy my commentary, you might want to check out my second brand new channel, Adam Does Rants, where I'm ranting about really first world problems at the end of the day, not getting your ice cream at McDonald's because they pretend they have ice cream, but they don't. Or people loudly listening to music on their phones without headphones in. So they just walk around public places blasting music because they're the main character at the end of the day and none of us matter at all. That's the kind of stuff I'm doing. And if you love my content, I have Patreon at patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. All right, that's it. Hopefully I see you next time.